First things first, John. How are you? Good, man. Good, Good. to hear. Yeah. So before we get into the new record, I wondered because uh, you've always said you've uh, been a, you are a big history uh, enthusiast. Mm -hmm. Did that coincide with your love for music, or did it come after? Um, no, it, it's actually way before music. Even. Okay. To my, you know, very early childhood. Well, I should say, I mean, I loved music as a kid too. My right. first, like even, you know, I remember hearing Sabbath at, as early as three years old. You know, because right. my older sister listened to it and I was into it, and you know, got into Kiss and all that and Maiden later, and you know, this the whole thing. So I was always into music, but this not as far as playing. That came later, like as a freshman in high school. Okay. Um, I wanted to do it when I saw Kiss. In 1979, that's when I decided, and it took me a few years to convince my dad to get me a guitar. What so. was it about Kiss? Uh, what, you know, it was just the the show. It was the whole, the, just the the shock of it okay. all, and uh, because I don't think they really influenced me as a writer a whole lot. You don't really hear it in Ice Earth Sound, but it, there's tons of bands that they influenced that sure, they don't, that don't sure. sound anything like Kiss. It's just they were like the band that makes you want to do that, you know, because mm -hmm. you're like, that's fucking cool. I want to do that. Right. <laughs> you know, and that is, it's just, I've been into them for obviously most of my life now. And, uh, but where were we going with that? I'm sorry. What well, was well, when your interest, uh, of the history thing. of history started with cult faith. Yeah. That started really young. Uh, I think probably because of my father, but was as soon as I was old enough to read, I was reading a, a lot of books, especially around the, uh, the bicentennial, because that was really in the, in the face of the people, you know, the 200th anniversary of the mm. country, so 1976, sure. and okay. I would have been eight years old then, and so, you know, I was really reading a lot about the founding fathers and stuff like that, right. so, yeah. And then once you do pick up a guitar and, and start to write, did it help kind of having that, that knowledge in, in, in terms of what you wrote about? No, because back then I wasn't, I wasn't in that frame of mind to, is a, what really the the when I got a guitar, I took all of my artistic energy or passion or whatever from drawing and painting and stuff okay. and put it into a guitar. So because okay. I was an artist too, and and that was uh, that just I transferred all my art into the music, you know. And and you mentioned these kind of uh, different outlets in a, in a way, uh, a visual sonically with the guitar. So. Do you approach these uh, things differently? Did you approach these things differently? Were, were they very different forms of expression for you? Yeah. I mean, see, I, I, I stopped doing art when I got a guitar. And I guess that was when I was, what, 14 years old okay. or something. So <coughs> when, I was, when I was drawing and doing that kind of stuff, I, there, were, there were the drawings where I was being schooled on how to be an artist from art class kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then there was the, the things that I would do where I would just let, let it go, whatever it was, and just start, put the pencil to paper or whatever and just go. And I would say music is probably more, it's more in line with that than it is the schooled stuff because I'm not schooled musically either. So right. it's just a, um, I just, when I get into a, a stream of consciousness, of, of songwriting, I'm just kind of channeling stuff from somewhere and it goes and turns into something and that's, that started pretty quick after I could So, so once you picked up the guitar, it was kind of, okay, this, this will do me, this... Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Took over completely. And then, yeah, fair enough. So, did you know immediately I want to form a band and was, was that kind of the whole plan of... of um, yeah, I mean, I knew, like I said, when I saw Kiss when I was 11, I was like, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. and. It took me a while to get a guitar. My dad, I finally convinced him, and he did. And uh, so it it was it was a matter of time. I mean, I knew I I have to learn how to play something first before right. I can get together and jam with some guys. But it it started, and you know how it's just how every other kid starts, man. You start and you sound pretty bad in the beginning, and then you get a little bit better, and then you start jamming with your friends, and that sound bad, and you start, you know, it's it, then it gets better, and it's just the sure. it's the way it is. Yeah. Do you remember what you you said to convince your father to buy you a guitar? Oh no, this I don't remember. I don't remember. Yeah, it's a long time, and I don't think I said one thing. I probably just wouldn't stop about it. Right. And he was finally right. like, okay, this isn't going to go away. He's mm. serious about it. So. And then, well, you start a band. 
Was it as you expected it as, as that 13 uh, year old and even younger kid and then seeing kids? What was being in a band as you expected it to be? Um, well, I, no, I wouldn't <laughs> say no, it's not. I mean, especially as the longer I was in and the sure, more, sure, God, sure. then you're like, yeah, this is nowhere near the illusion that you <laughs> think it is when you're in fan mode because the, obviously a fan and a, a kid who has no experience with this is going to draw conclusions based just on their imagination purely. Right. They'd have no idea, you know. So I get that, you know, that's a, obviously a pretty human thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so when did you kind of think, okay, this, this is something I, because obviously you have a great passion for it, you're still doing it. So, so when did you kind of decide, well, this, this is the path I'm going down. This, I can actually make a living doing this. And uh, you know, I never, I, I didn't even know that I was concerned with making a living. Okay. I just, it, it's never been driven by money at all. Okay. And it, it, when I took off and left home uh, to start the band, sure. it was, failure was not an option ever. I mean, you know, whatever, whatever challenges come in the way, we're going to get through it and push through it. And that's kind of my attitude always about stuff. But I, I don't, uh, the money has never been a driving factor for, for Iced Earth. I mean, for me in Iced Earth, because it's, it's really about the art and, a, mm -hmm. and about the passion for creating songs and making cool records and knowing that it's going to touch people, you know, and it's a, it's a big deal. And uh, like you say, it, it was uh, hard work when, once you moved, I believe you moved to Florida and then and there you kind of had to do odd jobs to, to kind of follow your dreams in a way. So, so how do you look back at the, those first couple of years, even before it, it was called Ice Earth and then kind of the band was, was just developing? It was a lot of hard work, man, but it's still hard work today. You know, okay. it, it never stops. It just sort of transforms into something else. And, um, but yeah. I worked a full-time day job and many jobs. I'd quit to go on tour in Europe or whatever, but until through the Dark Saga cycle, you know okay. what I mean? A lot of records, and we were selling a lot of records, but we had a really terrible contract, so there okay. wasn't really any money to be made from selling records. It right. had to be earned to, to get what we could out on the road, which also wasn't very much. So, you know, it's, it's, that's the, the realities of the business when you're, when you're young and hungry and you, you really want to... Um, you want to do something because you love it and you believe in it, trust me when I say this, there are plenty of people out there that will take advantage of you right. because you have that kind of commitment to something that's pure mm. and they're fucking parasites. Right. And there's a lot of them in and this then, business. <clears throat> I, I might be wrong about this, but am I right in saying that, that in between uh, Plagues of Babylon and, and the new album, there were some management issues as well? Yeah, we went through a pretty big change. There's, you know, I'm not going to get into the details sure, sure. of anything, but it's, it definitely uh, shook things up for us. So... So that I'm not going to ask you exactly what happened, but, but what, what does that to, you, to your creative spirit, so to say? Well, what it does to me is it's, I can't say what, what it does for everybody else, but for me, it, gives, it makes me, like, I'm, I, I just am not a quitter. So mm -hmm. it kind of drives me even harder to, to face the challenge and beat it and move on. And um, I think that's the, ultimately the outcome. And then... You know, there, if you can calm down and get some peace, and that's why I just took some time and I bought the buildings, built the headquarters building, focused, and we focused on all that stuff, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then went to work then. So it gave me, I had about a year of, of time to heal my body from the surgery and sure. to, from the other th stuff and to train and to focus on the building and, you know, work on that stuff. And that got me to a point where I was calm and peaceful and ready to open up to whatever it is that right. where the music comes from i don't know was that year liberating for you was it what liberating what uh the year where you didn't have to th uh, where you weren't writing where you where you kind of were recovering and, and yeah and yeah that's a good way to describe it i hadn't thought about that but yes it was it was liberating for sure because well can you explain it a little bit more because because what what's obviously you had a tough surgery but what 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 was it like leading up to that point well, we were worked really hard for for a, a three year period. We worked our asses off and mm -hmm. were on a schedule that was ridiculous and ended up not being productive because the band was burnt out. Right. So, you know, the um, 
and, I, and then I had the, the issues with the neck, which certainly came from the amount of travel and the amount of flying was just a ridiculous amount of flying around the planet. And when you go for, you know, for the three years that we started this with Dystopia, um, we were, we did two studio albums and a DVD and we did around 350 live shows, I think, mm -hmm. if memory serves. So it's some, somewhere like that. It's a lot of work, man. I mean, you're going from one major thing into another with very, very little time to come down and that's the the thing about um it's it's hard to find balance it's hard for me to find balance and and i think it is for a lot of people in in our business but you're you, you get kind of in fight or flight all the time right. where your body's always under stress and you're even when you get home it it uh if it's just for a week or two it's not enough time to come down because you really need to to calm down and to allow your body to heal because it's always getting under stress there's bad stuff going on sure. and you got to relax to heal and that's the that's the vicious trap that we get into when in those kind of cycles because you go from you know one period of touring and then okay now it's time the pressure's on you got to start writing songs and you got to do the pre-production and master tracking mm -hmm. and then go out and do the press tour and go back on the road and you know and sometimes the shows are in between all that so it's it's a challenging thing for the for us you know i mean for all all musicians sure and then well, the last thing about this is, is when, when you go through these ups and downs uh, throughout your career, is there ever a mo moment where your passion kind of wanes or where, where you think, well, I don't know if this still uh, is worth it? Oh, yeah. I think there's, you get frustrated and those, those questions come into your head. You, mm -hmm. I'd be lying if I said it didn't right. through the years, but I, ultimately I just... I, I bear down and fight it. You know what I mean? Because you say, yeah, you're not a quitter. So, so what keeps you going? What, what, what drives you? Well, the ultimate driving force at this point would be um, still the, the love of songwriting and making records, man. Mm -hmm. You know, the, which is, it's the, it's the most fulfilling part of, of the whole process of, of everything sure. to do with this. It's like, you know, that thing that's going on here and in your heart and soul and your, you work, you get it, it's there. And then, you know, you mix it and you, it's finished and you hold that final product in your hand and you go, man, this, this is a, it's a testament to something, you know. Right. And so that's, that's the real, for me, that's the real satisfaction. Some guys just love to get out and jam and, you know, they get off on the adrenaline rush from that all the time. And, you know, that's cool, but that's not, that's not my motivation, you know. And so after this this year where you kind of uh, found your piece, so to say, and then and what was the first song that you wrote that kind of ended up on the album? Um, actually, the the <coughs> music for, I think it was the Relic, actually, that after Jim came up and, and uh, got the studio wired up, he helped me get everything unpacked and, and we, you know, we got every, all the gear going and all that stuff. And I'm pretty sure it was that that music okay. that I that I came up with and just did a, a pretty did the arrangement play the, the keyboard part everything just went okay. really fast and then um, I just sat on it for a while and there was a point when I was talking to Stu what do you want to write about you know what I mean because I know what lyrics I'm going in with my songs what directions but what are you feeling because I've, I've got to come up with the the landscape the soundscape of the sure. thing to try to match it. So I always want the singers to say, what is it? So that if I'm inspired by it, then I know we're good. If, if not, I, you gotta give me more or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so he that, he that was one of the song titles and he told me, we were talking on the phone, he told me about the story and I told him, I, I said, I think I have a piece that would work great for that. I'll send it to you if you like it, cool. If not, I'll keep it for something. Right. And he, he loved it and then he, he came up with the, you know, the really great parts, man. So that's, I think that was the first one.